What's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the Arizona Daily Wildcat Football Beat Writer Show. Football season is in full swing, and honestly, I don't know what would be more exciting than talking football with these two handsome gentlemen right here. To my right is Bobby Stover from the Arizona Daily Wildcat, and I'm Tim Kosh. Conference season is in play for the Arizona football team, but first, let's go back a week. What happened in Iowa, Bobby? Well, I gotta admit, I was in Iowa, and that was not exactly a pretty game. From people I talked to, watched the game on TV, you guys thought it was ugly. In person, it was even worse. So, it, you know, the defense it really seemed like they couldn't stop anything. And offense, you know, Nick Grigsby, aside from one run, was totally, really wasn't even, didn't make the trip. And, uh, you know, you could obviously, the big talk is Matt Scott. Matt Scott was pretty hideous. So, uh, you know, Overall, this team needs to improve this week. Oregon State should, shouldn't be that big of a test, but you know, if they don't come to uh, you know, play at all, then they're really going to get their asses kicked. I think you hit the, the key right there was Matt Scott and really his futility so far this season. He hasn't been good at all, uh, not against Central Michigan, not against uh, Northern Arizona, and not at all against Iowa. So finally, it's about time they made the switch. Nick Foles is now the starting quarterback for Arizona. A uh, big, tall guy, transferred from Michigan State, um, 6'5", has a rocket for an arm. He's not as athletic as Matt Scott was. But honestly, Bob, if we've seen one thing from Matt Scott in the last three weeks, it's that athleticism does not matter if you're a quarterback. Yeah, no, it, the thing that was really stood out to me is after this game with, uh, with Iowa and the post-game press conferences, talking to Nick Grigsby, he mentioned that um, in the, there's a big difference in the huddle. Matt Scott tends to rush things. He's really, you know, quick, really fast paced. He doesn't seem to really have a big stronghold over this offense. But when Nick Foles got in there, it seemed like he really uh, took a little bit more charge, knew what he was talking about, and really calmed the offense down and drove it down. As you could see, he drove it down the field and scored something Matt Scott couldn't do all day. So he might not be able to run the ball very well, and maybe not at all. But you know, sunshine, he might be able to, you know, put some points on the board with his arm. Yeah, and the thing about Matt Scott that I think bothered me, and I'm sure bothered coaches for Arizona, was that he never really took the time in the pocket to make throws, uh, to make his reads. You could tell that every time he left the huddle, he looked at the defense and he said, okay, I'm going to throw to this guy now because he, there's no one on him at this moment. But he never took the time to drop back, read the defense, and see what was going on. So that was the most frustrating thing with Matt Scott, and that's why you never saw him throw the ball down the field. Now, my question to you here, Bob, is that Stoops made the decision to go to Foles, but he still said Scott would play, and Scott would play a substantial amount of time, and probably in the first half. Do you think that's a good idea, or sh should they say, listen, Nick, this is your chance. Take the team. If you mess up, we'll give it to Matt, but this is you right now. Uh, that's a terrible idea. I don't think that he deserves this, the opportunity right now. I think uh, Matt Scott has proven that he cannot move the ball down the field. His running ability is pretty much, well, his whole philosophy right now is, let me look for about two seconds whether I can get a ball out, and if not, I'm going to freak out and just start running. One thing in Iowa is that he looked, he had always had a receiver open on the left. Never, never looked that direction. He always looked downfield for about two seconds, tried to run it, including a, a touchdown pass he could have easily had that he screwed up that way. I think you got to give Nick Foles the entire offense to work with and see what he does. If he turns out that he can't take control of it and he can't move the ball, then, then start moving in Scott. But give Foles a shot. And then, of course, one thing that we haven't mentioned, that's the offense has been the big story throughout the season, and the offense took yet another hit this past weekend as Rob Gronkowski, the All-American tight end, best player on the team, arguably the best player in the conference. Um, he's out for the year with back surgery. Uh, it's a devastating blow. It really is, um, with, especially with a young quarterback. Oftentimes, a young quarterback tends to use his tight ends as running backs, short passes, wide open guys, usually against slower defenders like linebackers. But now without Rob Gronkowski, who caused mismatches like you would not believe for opposing defenses, without him in the lineup, the Arizona uh, lineup is a very, very mundane team. And those wide receivers that were superstars last year have become a lot more average because there's uh, everyone in the secondary can cover them and no one has to worry about Rob Gronkowski. Now, an interesting question here, Bob, is that before the season, everyone was uh, very, very... Uh, they were looking forward to this season for Arizona. Bowl game, 10 wins, Rose Bowl, maybe, who knows. 
without a good quarterback, without Rob Gronkowski, which is the big thing, do you think Arizona still has a chance at a bowl game? I think it's going to be really, really interesting this next week. We're going to find out what kind of team Arizona might really be capable of being with um, Nick Foles being in there because we know what Matt Scott can do. And I think if Matt Scott was still in there, we'd probably end up out of the postseason completely. But if there's an option that Nick Foles can really turn around this offense, then I think we could still make something. Maybe 6-6, six and six, but that's still a bowl game. It is still a bowl game. Whether or not that's deserving of a bowl yeah. game is an argument for another day. One good thing about the Arizona schedule for the rest of the year is that their first conference game is against a team that had high uh, preseason aspirations, but they've kind of struggled so far this year, and that is uh, Oregon State. Uh, their second, they're two and one. Their second game of the year, they only beat UNLV by two points. And last year, they got, um, last week, excuse me, they got manhandled by Big East uh, Cincinnati. So they have the Rogers brothers. Everybody knows about Jacquez and James. They have a bit of a quarterback controversy, might, much like Arizona does. Although their two quarterbacks have played well, so it's mm. not. It's a it's a more it's enjoyable a fortunate, fortunate coaching controversy. Uh, controversy for Oregon State and their coaches, but. Looking ahead uh, in the conference, obviously there's been some shakeups. USC lost. Washington beat them. Washington hadn't won in a very long time against a Pac-10 team. And then to not only win a conference game, but to beat USC, who's won seven straight Pac-10 titles, that's impressive. Is Washington for real? No one knows for sure. But they're better than they were last year. And as of now, they're better than Arizona. So looking ahead, this conference, it's a lot better than we thought. Next week with uh, Oregon State, that's a winnable game. If they win this game, Bob, take us through these two scenarios. If they beat Oregon State, this is a huge, it's a statement game. Mm -hmm. It is. But if they lose to Oregon State, then what happens? If they lose to Oregon State, you know, we saw what Washington did to USC. Now, whether that's really going to be something that they're going to be able to keep repeating, that's, that's yet to be seen. So it could turn out that you know, Washington is a better team than we think, or it could turn out that you know, this, this loss to Oregon State really just is – so a stepping stone in the right direction if Nick Foles takes a few steps forward and as well as this entire team. I felt personally after Iowa that the entire team really took a step backward. But if they lose to Oregon State, I think you are in a danger zone. But I don't think it's season over yet because we got to see what Washington is capable of. But it's going to be a tough test. Why? Yeah. No, it, it definitely is. And I think now we should kind of wrap it up here with predictions for the game. Mm -hmm. And since you went first last time, and since mm -hmm. you're just the best when it comes to everything, I'm going to take <laughs> my time to shine right here, right. and I'll go first. Oregon State, like I said before, it's a statement game for Arizona. Either they show up, they win, and they go head first into the rest of the season, or they lose. More questions about the quarterbacks, the defense, the receivers. Everything just becomes worse and worse and worse. And that smoke pile that you see coming away from... Arizona Stadium right now it gets higher and higher and darker and it gets scarier for Arizona um, I want them to win everybody wants them to win this is a team to pull for there's a lot of likable guys there are a lot of uh, a lot of good players good coaches everything's going on but I just don't think it's going to happen this week. Going into Corvallis, it's going to be tough. I think Oregon State squeaks it out and they take this game 27 to 17. Bobby, what about you? 10 point, 10 point spread, huh? I'm going to spread on that and the loss. You know, I really have a hard time picking this game because, again, it, after last week, seeing how bad they played, they really haven't looked impressive at all this whole season. So, you know, Oregon State, they have had a hard time. Obviously, Sean Canfield, the quarterback, last week was pretty pitiful. You know, went only 50% passing, you know, a couple of interceptions. So, you know, I think I'm going to give Arizona the benefit of the doubt here. Assuming Matt Scott doesn't see a whole lot of time at least passing through the air, I think Nick Foles is going to take hold of this offense and really make a difference. So I'm going to go the other way. It's going to be a tight one, but how about a 17-14 Arizona win in Corvallis? How about that? You know, something good comes out of Corvallis. Not much does. There you go, Bob. You're a <laughs> high-spirited guy. That does it for us uh, today for this week's edition of the Arizona Daily Wildcat football show. We'll see you next week. So now we pretend to talk. Like